Hello everyone, my name is Sibyl Hunzimana. I'm super excited to be able to connect with you all here today online. Um, I'm 16 years old and I'm a Kid Spirit contributor from Haiti. I've been writing for the magazine for about a year now and in the fall, I'm really excited to be attending the University of Toronto <clears throat> where I'll be studying literature and hopefully continue to pursue writing. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Joel Sartore who is an award-winning photographer, speaker, author, and conservationist. Joel is also the creator of The Photo Arc, which is a really cool project that's lasted about 18 years so far. He started it in 2006, um, in which he's photographed over 15,000 different species to raise awareness of the extinction crisis, which is obviously something that is very important. Um, I'm honored to be interviewing him here today to learn more about his work, and I hope people watching at home can learn a little bit more as well. I'm Joel Sartori, the founder of National Geographic Photo Arc and Video Arc. My goal is to document every species in human care around the world. That's mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, fish, and invertebrates. I do this at zoos, aquariums, and wildlife sanctuaries. More than 800 locations over the past 17 years. Each and every one of these animals is amazing. All are worth saving and deserve our protection. Today we have nearly 15,000 species on board the Ark. Each is a living work of art and deserves our full attention right now, while there's still time. I'm doing everything I can to get the world to pay attention and save them all. Now, how about you? My next question, what you were talking about with um, photographing animals in studios, um, I feel like that might be a bit stressful for them just because you know they're entering unknown environments and you have bright lights and flashing cameras. So what do you do um, on your part to limit the stress and anxiety that might that might come with that right. on the part well, of an animal. Right, that's a great question. And we, we think about that all the time and we work with the animal welfare people at zoos, aquariums, captive breeders. Um, so number one, we don't use bright lights. It's not Hollywood. And it's also not paparazzi, bang, 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 right? We can shoot without any lights at all. So let's take the most difficult, which are ungulates, grazing ants, gazelles and zebras, that kind of thing. So what's key is that the zoo in advance preps the space to black or white. That means they paint a wall black or they, they paint a wall and a floor white or, or painted plywood or whatever. Then they get the animals. This is in, let's say, a night space or a feeding area. Then the animal is used to it. And by shoot day, they, the animal just thinks they're coming in to have lunch. And I can also control the flashes, which are buried in these soft boxes to soften the light. And the, and the flash is only a 10,000th of a second or a 15,000th of a second. So it doesn't register very much any more than it would you or I. Doesn't hurt the animal's eyes or any. And we also try to work very quickly. So the animal number one is coming in. We can turn the lights on or leave them off from the camera position. We're often shooting through a little hole in a fence or through a screen of some sort. So, and we're quiet, respectful. We're not talking, we're not laughing. It's not a party, it's work. We get done in just a few minutes, then the animal goes on and finishes their lunch or shifts outside or whatever whatever it is. So we're we're really mindful of that. That's very, uh, very much on top, top of mind for us. And we've never had a problem doing that. And we're at almost 16,000 species now. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's so it's impressive. It's a How lot. Of, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Well, I've been doing this now for about almost 18 years. That's all I do. So if we, let's say we get a little frog. We make sure he's moist and cool. We put him into a tabletop shooting tent. 
Same with a little lizard or maybe a small snake. If we have small birds, they also go into the into a, a cloth, white, soft shooting tent. Light can come through, but the animal stays in there. And so uh, the light comes right through the sides of the tent. And again, the animal only sees the small front of my lens. They front don't see me because the lens comes in through a little lens port. Uh, they don't see me. They don't hear me. And uh, it's just a, a few minutes on white. We can slide the white out from underneath the animal without touching the animal then on black, and then the the tent is small and can be taken right back to the animal's enclosure and opened up and the bird flies out or the frog hops out. So it's fairly straightforward that way. Yeah, makes sense. I mean- Yeah, you know, you know the hard part, the hard part is, is, and it's not hard, it just takes a little time. The preparation is far more uh, time consuming than the shooting. The shooting is the quick part. The preparation in, in terms of we get an inventory or a list of what a zoo has, we say, hey, we'd like to do these 20. We don't have these 20 species yet. And the zoo says, well, we can do these 10. These 10 would be suitable for that. So we listen to what they say, and then and then they they get ready for large animals. We bring our, our tabletop shooting tent for the smaller animals, and, and away we go. But the prep is the time-consuming part. Yeah, I mean, it, it must be. I mean, these are some pretty impressive animals that you're dealing with here in your in your project. It's pretty amazing. 